appreciate Friday is Friday afternoon isn't everybody's preferred time um, for doing this kind of session. So, so great that so many of you come this afternoon. Um, and thank you also um, to Brian and his team um, for supporting this, because again, it, it's part of um, a conversation that we're having with the borough, which is about trying to make um, the relationship between the two of us far more um, visible. Um, than it has been for a long time. So, so thank you greatly. And I'll just give a shout out to who we think is with us this afternoon. Um, I know Brian Reed is here because I can see him on the screen. Um, Head of Democratic Services and Governance at the Borough. Nick Billington, um, Policy Officer. Um, Phil Christian, Research Consultation Team Lead. Um, Tim Oliver, Senior Media Relations Officer. And Sarah Baxter, Democratic Services Officer, whose role it is to make everything look dead easy and seamless. Um, so before I hand over to um, to Brian, um, who will do, of course, a, present, a PowerPoint presentation, no session would be complete without one. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things. First of all, yes, I know how much you like to collect slides. Slides will be sent on to you after the, uh, after the session. And it's also our hope that we will be able to record the session. The session will be recorded. So for people who haven't been able to be here this afternoon, we should be able to circulate a link to them so we can catch up with it um, you know, at their own convenience. Um, as Brian intimated earlier, it's really helpful if you make sure you mute yourself. And I think just about everybody has done. But you can guarantee it's for one person who has the problem that doesn't mute themselves. OK, so if you unexpectedly find yourself muted, it could be because we can hear you in the background, although you don't notice. Um, if you're having problems, sometimes it does help if you switch your camera off. Um, and certainly when we're having the, the presentation with the slides, we don't see, see much of you anyway. So, so don't worry too much if you if we don't see you. Um, and um, as we said before, we have had some questions submitted in advance. Brian will go through, take those first and go through those at the end of his presentation. But there'll still be an opportunity to ask questions at the end of the session. OK, so over to you, please, Brian. Well, th thank you, Jackie, very much for your welcome. And uh, thank you also to uh, our town and parish council colleagues, whether they be clerks, or councillors, or maybe even some uh, mayors. You're all very welcome at this session today. Uh, and it's great actually to uh, see that our colleagues out there that perform such an important role in the community as community representatives are engaging uh, in this process. Um, so I think we're gonna have a good time. Um, I think uh, that the information we present to you will hopefully be helpful to you. And, um, Please feel free when the opportunity um, uh, presents itself to just ask uh, some questions. Uh, there's nothing that we would rule out. Uh, I will be reminding um, uh, colleagues around this table that we had sought to steer away from individual particular queries relating to parish councils because uh, those might not necessarily be of great interest to uh, the entire body of attendees. But what I have tried to do, and thank you to those who did submit the questions in advance uh, as we asked, uh, I've tried to pull out any uh, general issues that might be of relevance to everyone already. Uh, I did get a very detailed set of questions from someone uh, and I've done my best to respond directly on those matters to them. So uh, we will do our best to answer specific questions separately. The generalities we'll bring to you today. So if I can just ask my colleague Sarah to put the PowerPoint presentation up um, and I'll seek to steer uh, the meeting through this. Uh, we'll just wait. Uh, sometimes there's a little bit of a delay with the uh, opening the, the presentation, etc. So I'll just pause a minute whilst Sarah does that. Can we see that everybody? Uh, we can't see the presentation, Sarah. We can see your um, your sort of you need to click on the actual uh, PowerPoint presentation because at the moment we're seeing. Uh, yeah, we're see I've, I've done that and it should be on screen. Uh, that no, be the, the, the presentation, the presentation isn't open. Right, um, that's perhaps, strange because it should be. Um, perhaps go back and try again. Right again. Apologies, colleagues, that uh, 
we've just got a bit of a, a technical hitch there. Sarah's one of the most experienced people. I was so glad to have her with us, but it, even the best sometimes just hit a technical problem. Um, can you see that now? There we go. There, there we go. That's that's <laughs> great. So if you can go on to the first slide, Sarah, that's super. And I'll just take colleagues through. I think you've skipped to yeah, there. Oh, next one. There you go. Next one, yeah. The next, that's it, yeah. Um, so, uh, colleagues, I wanted to try to give um, a broad view of the CGR process. I'll abbreviate it as CGR. It's the Community Governance Review of Town and Parish Council Governance, of course. But I don't want to see, say that in full every time because uh, the meeting would be very long indeed but um, and please forgive me because there will be some colleagues around the table that know a lot about this process but there will be others who who don't so uh, i will take the meeting through things stage by stage and and apologies to those colleagues if if i'm saying things that they know but i want to give a little bit of detail about the legislation where where does the power to do all of this come from uh, i want to talk a little bit about why cheshire east council uh, the Borough Council is embarking upon this process. Um, I'd like to give you a flavour of what's been done so far and what is still to be done. Um, and some idea about timings, because it's clear that these things are important to our Town and Parish Council colleagues. And then uh, uh, of great importance, of course, was what, what might happen as a consequence of this review. Uh, as I said before, I'm not going to want to delve into uh, the minutiae, uh, minutiae and particularities of issues relating to particular parish councils. So I would ask you uh, to steer away when you get a chance to ask questions from uh, that sort of detail. Try to keep any questions general. Um, and if there are real issues relating to your uh, parish council that you want uh, answering, then maybe you can email Sarah or perhaps even email myself and we'll do our best to answer those separately. So if we can go Sarah on to the next slide, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the background really, where does all this come from? And when I joined Cheshire East Council, I was here from the beginning, uh, I was really quite astonished at the level of and numbers of town and parish councils in Cheshire East Borough. Of course, uh, it used to be three boroughs, didn't it? It used to be Congleton Borough, Crewe and Nantwich, uh, Macclesfield. And when the local government reorganisation happened in 2009, uh, all of a sudden we had a great big borough authority, a huge geographical area. Uh, and you could see it there, 135 town and parish councillors, uh, councils with over a thousand councillors. And of course, uh, that makes just elections alone a huge operation. Um, and of course, we're already preparing for 2023. Um, but of course, that's a whole lot of town and parish council activity. And, and what I would say uh, really touches a little bit on what I was saying at the beginning, that Cheshire East Council sees our town and parish councils as a hugely important um, um, set of uh, of, of colleagues and stakeholders that that uh, we really want to work with well and closely and we see the importance of what you deliver on the ground for your residents every day and this community governance review process has brought that into sharp focus i've had so many more contacts with town and parish councils in the last couple of years uh, and i've seen uh, uh, exactly the value that uh, you put into the community. So thank you for that. The guidance, and I'm going to go into a little bit more guidance from the, the Local Government Boundary Commission for England and the DCLG. The guidance tells borough councils that it should be reviewing town and parish council governance every 10 to 15 years. Uh, and I'll give you a little bit of background on that. But it is now the right time for Cheshire East Council to do that. Uh, if you want to see the legislation, it's there in front of you. You can have a look at that separately. But the 2007 Act, Part 4, Chapter 3, says it all. What I've tried to do, uh, also you'll see that on the slides, there are a couple of blue coloured links. Uh, and Sarah Baxter uh, has found a techie way of making sure that these slides can be copied to 
all Town and Parish Council clerks to anyone who wants to see them and you will be able to access this guidance. I wanted to make it easy and less laborious for our Town and Parish Council colleagues. So you can drill straight into the Local Government Boundary Commission uh, for England's website there and, and see the background to uh, uh, community governance reviews if you want to do that. So Sarah, if you move on to the next slide, that would be great. Um, so the question naturally arises and has been asked many times of me over the last two or three years. Why on earth is Cheshire East Council doing this? Why are we embarking upon a community governance review now? Well, the first thing to say really is that legislation places the duty, the responsibility upon, uh, in this case, Cheshire East Council to conduct community governance reviews. It's set out there in the legislation and you can look at it yourself if you would find that that, that to be helpful. Uh, it's our duty to keep Town and Parish Council governance under review and to bring forward changes to Town and Parish Council governance uh, as and when that is appropriate. Now, I've been at Cheshire East Council from the beginning since uh, April 2009 when we came into being, when local government reorganisation happened. And uh, I know as a matter of fact that Town and Parish Council governance has never been re uh, reviewed in the borough apart from um, uh, a number of small scale reviews relating to unparished areas. They were quite big in terms of population. Uh, it was Macclesfield, Crewe, Wilmslow, Handforth and Stile were reviewed in the very early years simply because there was no parish council at all for those areas. And those areas became parished and then uh, uh, a good number of them decided to become towns, of course, but the entire borough is now parished. But um, looking back more widely, no review was, was carried out for the rest of them uh, since at least 2009. And then when were reviews last ca carried out? And the answer is we don't know. We don't know when the demised authorities last conducted community governance reviews and therefore it's timely. But not just that. What we find, found out is that over the years, various issues have been brought uh, to, 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 to light in terms of the way town and some town and parish councils are operating. So, for example, uh, there are a number, a small number, uh, which is good, but just a, a number nevertheless of, of parish councils that are not functioning at all. There are not many of them, but that isn't right. So we need to look at why that's the case. And I should perhaps say that the district auditor is in regular contact with us, asking us why certain parish councils aren't functioning, what we're going to do about it and how we deal with any related issues. We're aware also that some town and parish councils find difficulty in getting candidates to stand when there are vacancies. Um, I did have a quick look back at local election results and there were 125 town and parish council seats that were left unfilled in recent times. So that's not widespread. We've already said that there are uh, over a thousand town and parish councillors in the borough, but 125 um, sounds to me, you know, it's, it's over 10%, isn't it? So it's quite a high proportion of town and parish council seats not filled. Um, a big issue which colleagues around this table will be aware of is the local plan development. So I don't want to get back into my former role as a planning lawyer from years past, but we know that lots and lots of housing development has uh, already been put in place in the borough. We know that more is planned. Uh, and what this has left us with, um, in, in some cases, uh, are situations that have been brought to our attention, whereby, for example, a housing estate has been placed in a relatively rural par parish, adjoining but outside the boundary of a town. And some views have been expressed to me that actually this leads to a difficulty because uh, in some cases, the residents of that new housing estate in the parish more readily identify with the town. They use the facilities provided by the town and paid for by the town precept. 
whilst they reside in the parish that may have a much lower precept. Now, I know that there are arguments on all sides of that, but we certainly need to look at that, whether, whether or not that should be allowed to subsist or whether or not we should take that into account in the review. So housing development is something else that has been brought to our attention. Uh, <coughs> physical features separating communities. Well, uh, we're aware, maybe not a huge number, but we're aware of a, a, of a number of uh, human uh, uh, barriers or obstructions, bypasses, roads or whatever that have built, been built right through parishes. And at the end of the day, a parish is a community, isn't it? That's one of the key themes of uh, the legislation around community governance reviews that our parishes are communities of individuals who relate to each other. So that in some cases, it's been brought to our attention that actually there's a bypass in the middle. And it seems to some that these are more than one community rather than one. Uh, and another issue is elector to councillor ratios. Uh, if we look across the borough, we see, for example, I'll give you the extremes. We see, for example, that in Little Warford, there is one councillor for every seven electors, one to seven. Whereas if you look somewhere at perhaps Crewe Town, wholly different circumstances, one to three and a half thousand. Now, we know that there must always be an acknowledgement of a town and the, the density of population and electors, and we know that there will never be one size that fits all. But there are some disparities, and it is right that we look at those ratios. We're not saying we, we want to introduce a uniform number across the borough, but we do need to uh, look at those. And there was a question that came up uh, which I'll try to touch on uh, later as, as part of the questioning time. So shall I have a look, Sarah, at the next slide, which I think should be progress so far. There we go. So um, this has been a long process. Um, the review itself, the CGR, Community Governance Review, has been uh, taking place since September 2018. So we're almost to the day, three years into this process. And we've got about 20 months left to go. 20 months, which takes us to sort of April, May 2023, seems a long way away. But when we look at the amount of work that's got to be done, it isn't. Uh, and I'm going to give you some examples of um, the timeline we followed, why things have not moved as quickly as they might have. Uh, but again, I hope it's helpful to you when you get the slides. I've uh, put in there some links to some key meetings of Cheshire East Council that give really an enormous amount of background and detail on where this community governance review has come from. And the first of those uh, was the report to the September 2018 meeting of Cheshire East Council's Constitution Committee, when uh, the um, question of conducting a community governance review first came into being. You'll see my report there to the committee. The, um, I've just seen Sarah, uh, is it Councillor Barraclough is not seeing some changes, the message has disappeared. Uh, let me just see if I can get that message up. I've just seen a message uh, from one Richard Barraclough. I am not seeing any changes when Sarah's, Sarah shows a new slide. Is everybody else seeing the slides? Or is anybody not seeing that yet? Yeah, okay, I'm getting thumbs up that people are seeing them. Don't know, Councillor or Mr. Barraclough, whether there is a specific issue on your system. Okay. Okay. So okay. I'll I'll carry on presenting um, whilst we try and get that sorted out. But the first blue link there takes you to the agenda for the Constitution Committee. Please do link up with that. Have a look uh, at the report on there when Cheshire East Council. Uh, first embarked upon the first stages of this community governance review. Uh, we've also had a number of questions about, well, what sets the, the remit for this review? Well, of course, the answer is the legislation, primarily, the government and the Local Government Boundary Commission for England guidance, which I think you will find in one or maybe even both uh, of these links, uh, certainly on the slide pack. Uh, 
but there are extensive terms of reference for this review. Uh, we've been working with uh, a nationally renowned expert in community governance reviews. He's not here today, uh, Dr. Melvin Humphreys, who's done many reviews uh, like this across the country. Uh, and we, we've really taken his advice uh, quite carefully in terms of how this community governance review should be uh, pro pro progressed, the basis upon which it should progress. And uh, uh, he, he's given us very robust advice indeed upon how we can make sure that the terms of reference of the of the review do what it needs to be to, to do. We didn't want to be constrained in any way uh, or prevent individuals from engaging or somehow block out representation. So do have a look at that second report, the November 2018 report. It's probably about a 10 page report that set out the terms of reference. So Sarah, if we can go on to the next slide, that'd be great. So as colleagues can see, there's an awful lot of work being done on this review so far. The Constitution Committee, as it was then, was responsible for uh, administrative matters such as community governance reviews, but uh, such was the enormity of this job that it needed to appoint a subcommittee to drive forward uh, the work. So that's exactly what we got. Uh, you will see if you look at the Council's website, uh, meetings of the Community Governance Review Subcommittee. It's a committee of seven or eight uh, members of the Constitution Committee who have really worked tremendously hard over the months to get us to where we are now. And of course, they've been supported by an officer working group. Uh, I lead that officer group. Um, and as part of my team, I've got legal, financial, communications, electoral, council tax, um, uh, planning, a whole host of statistical colleagues who really guide and advise the members in making their decisions. So that's the officer working group. Uh, and over this last week, there have probably been five or six meetings alone of that officer working group just to make sure that we're on track. Um, we have sought to do our best to communicate this review with the town and parish councils. Thank you for coming to, uh, today. Uh, thank you for engaging and we'd encourage that. Uh, but since 2018, there have been numerous communications through our own um, hit list of town and parish council clerks. Uh, uh, Jackie Weaver has been very kind and very helpful uh, in also uh, uh, um, assisting with chalks processes to make people aware. We've done press releases, mail shots. There is the website. Please do look at the council's website uh, and you will find more information. So we're doing that our best to communicate. We have a further communications and engagement plan. Uh, the consultation is due to start on the 6th of September. We want everyone to know about that. We want all of those who wish to communicate with us and respond formally to the consultation to do exactly that. So we're going to be issuing more circulars, more information to clerks, more press releases and making it very clear how individuals can engage. But communication, really important. Um, I remember in those days, it seems a long time ago, Jackie, since we actually had a town and parish council conference. Hope we'll be having some soon. Um, but um, we've spoken at those town and parish council conferences uh, too, and uh, certainly I've had some quite robust questions in the past at those events. Now, between November uh, 2019 and January 2020, we decided that it would be appropriate to embark upon a pre-consultation survey. Now, there's nothing in the legislation, nothing in the guidance, nothing that compelled us to do this. And I hope it's testimony to the fact that we genuinely want to engage. We, did, we decided to embark upon pre-consultation survey. I think it was a 12 week period and uh, really sought to secure some initial views. What were the issues out there? What are those things that are on our town and parish council colleagues' minds? What are the things happening out there on the patch that might help to direct our members in terms of the way that this review should be conducted? And we got about 300 responses back, which wasn't bad. 
Of course, there was a whole lot of statistical analysis and elector ratios and housing development projections also that we held as a council that we were able uh, to put before our members. But those pre-consultation survey responses were really helpful in assisting uh, the council in getting to where we are now. Um, it's probably just worth mentioning that you know there, there were a number of responses inevitably which just said no change please we're happy that with the way things are but there were also some that were really well developed uh, exceptionally well thought out uh, and some parish councils some individuals put a lot of work into uh, constructing their reasoned case for why something should change or maybe why something shouldn't change and we really appreciated that. Um, there's now another opportunity. So I would encourage all who wish to do so. Of course, if you or any member of the public or any organisation wished to express the view simply, no change, please. That's important. It's a local view. But I believe you will agree with me that actually it carries a good deal of weight if there is some reasoning behind that and that's certainly what we saw as part of the pre-consultation survey process. Now those 300 responses together with the information I explained earlier that we held were really analysed and looked at in detail, they were chunked through. Um, our subcommittee which I've already mentioned spent hour upon hour upon it, I think they had somewhere around 30 hours, three zero hours of meetings alone, just deliberating over those issues. Uh, it, it was an immensely uh, testing process because it was conducted during the course of COVID. And I'll just admit whoever that was <laughs> who popped onto my screen. Um, it, it had to be conducted during the course of the COVID pandemic. And that meant that whereas our members would normally be poring over A0 sized maps with pencils and looking at boundaries uh, in, in a face to face meeting room in an effective way, all of a sudden we were confined to nine inch laptop screens. So it was really hard, uh, but members genuinely committed themselves to it. Uh, they were hugely engaged with it. It's cross party subcommittee of members that did this. It's not uh, political uh, in that sense. Uh, and I was really impressed. Uh, that was chaired by Councillor Joy Bratherton, if you know Joy. Uh, a, a most excellent process was gone through. So all of those um, uh, uh, responses were analysed and they were put then formally to the Community Governance Review subcommittee to be considered. Um, now, some colleagues around the table might know that in June this year, after some delays, COVID and all of the rest of it, um, the uh, council, full council, 82 councillors of Cheshire East met and made the final decision that it would approve for the purposes of consultation some draft proposals. So what had happened is all of the information that the council held uh, all of the consideration applied to those 300 matters which were submitted to the council. All of that was put together, worked through and developed into draft consultation proposals for the purposes of consultation that is about to happen on the 6th of September. Now, a consultation has to be open. You can't go into a consultation, as you know, with any fixed view that this will be the outcome. Otherwise, it's not a fair and proper consultation. In fact, it could be challengeable in the courts if that wasn't uh, uh, the case. So these are put forward very clearly as draft proposals for the purposes of consultation. And what we want is for you colleagues, anyone else, members of the public, town and parish councils not rep represented here, other stakeholders, Cheshire East Council's own members even. We're open to all suggestions, all representations to come back as part of that consultation and uh, to genuinely give us their views. As I've said before, they might be very brief views. They might be well reasoned and quite detailed uh, responses.
but we want those to come back. There is a 12 week consultation period. Uh, I was corresponding with somebody this morning uh, and that correspondence went along the lines of, well, if you wish to give more weight to your um, uh, representations at this stage, why not take them to the parish council? See if the parish, parish council supports them, because actually that will carry greater weight than just one individual who may have a particular view. So I would encourage colleagues to think carefully about how they gather support, uh, how they want to formulate their own responses, but above all, please do consider responding. So I think, Sarah, we're probably on slide seven. I hope everyone's still seeing this. I think our colleague before has managed to rectify whatever the technical problem was. So what can a community governance do? What, what might we end up with? What are the possible options that could come out of it? The full range of them is set out there. I'm not going to read through them all. Um, I would suggest that abolishing parish councils is, is at the extreme end of what might happen. Uh, you can create parish councils, of course. You can do all sorts of things like determining the number of parish councils if that's felt to be wrong. Uh, we won't be altering electoral cycles, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, anyway, as the deputy returning officer. Um, uh, you can create wards within parish. Um, one important thing, uh, I've had loads of questions uh, over recent years about, well, what does this mean for Cheshire East Council's borough ward boundaries? What does it mean for the parliamentary constituencies? Well, uh, happily, those are matters which rest with the Local Government Boundary Commission for England and not... Cheshire East Council, so they are not part of this process. Uh, I can't say that the Boundary Commission will not look at what Cheshire East finally ends up with in terms of its town and parish council governance. Uh, it certainly will receive a copy of the end results. Uh, and just while I'm on that particular subject, when you get a chance to look at the links and look at the reports, when the consultation is launched, you will be able to drill in to exactly what the draft consultation proposals are for your parish. So you'll be able to see what it was that Cheshire East Full Council approved for the purposes of consultation, whether it's no change, some change or major change, you'll be able to see that and that will help you then to formulate your response. So next slide, Sarah, I think it's number eight. Thinking about timeline. So I said already we've been going three years on this, haven't we? A lot of work's been done already, but how do things go between now and May 2023? Well, as we know, 6th of September, we start the consultation and uh, that carries on for that period, the full period for consultations up until the end of November, 12, 12 weeks. And again, I can't stress it enough, please do take the opportunity to respond. We will then need quite a long time to absorb and analyse all of the responses. I said to you before that many <laughs> tens of hours were spent by elected members alone, probably dwarfed 10 times by the number of hours spent by officers, but uh, many hours were spent before on analysing the responses. I expect many hours again will be spent upon analysing and consideration of the proper consultation uh, responses, and rightly so, because this is a proper consultation. We need to make sure that we do justice to all of the work that's been put in out there to formulate those responses. And then the I've put these things in, in brackets because like any major project, things move around a little bit uh, um, occasionally, and if there's anything key, we'll obviously let you know. But we're going to need those member workshops, those councillor workshops and subcommittee meetings. Uh, we hope that those will be concluded around or about March next year. Now, it might be, I say might be, as early as May next year, it might be that council, full council, will be able to meet to authorise the making of the final order. Um, don't want to get too bound in the legislation, but basically the council has to make an order which brings into being, from a legal perspective, the governance changes that it wishes to see implemented. So council has to meet to do that, just a little bit like 
Council did in June of this year when it authorised the consultation. Um, one of the most evident things to members of the public out there uh, of changes which might arise from the community governance review or changes that perhaps might happen where there are changes to uh, elections and council tax because inevitably each parish has its own precept doesn't it uh, each precept varies according to the services delivered by that particular parish council um, and there may be i would say uh, a smaller number of changes where where a boundary changes for example perhaps the example i gave you before where uh, a new housing estate uh, may be in a rural parish and if only if the review determines that that estate should be brought into a town for example if the town's precept is different to the one in the rural parish then there might be some changes to council tax details and also elections so i run elections with the council's election team and we're very mindful that where boundaries change if they're awarding uh, issues in in a parish council uh, if the number of parish councils change then that clearly affects how the elections will be con con conducted uh, the deadlines to which we're working are the publication of the electoral register in december next year that's when we need to know the position for electoral purposes, uh, but also the council tax bills. You know, there's a precepting process that leads up to the bills being issued in April uh, 2023. Uh, so we need to be very clear on that and make sure that we give the parish councils where there might be changes, sufficient information to know what they're doing on that front. So let's go, Sarah, to slide nine, I think it is. Um, and those outcomes and I think by now colleagues will be aware we we did go th through the full um, uh, list um, and I'm glad to see that Sarah ch changed the context of one of the bullets I realized there was a typo in that this morning and it, it didn't come across right so actually we expect that in the majority of cases that there will be unlikely to be any change at all Already, if you look at those pre-consultation survey uh, responses and look at the consultation proposals that were agreed by Council in June, you'll see that there's a great big chunk of um, uh, uh, proposals for this review that say no change, uh, no change needed here. So a big chunk of parish councils who won't see any change at all. There will be a further chunk of parish councils where the changes might be relatively minimal. There might be the need to change the number of councillors or create a ward or merge two wards or something like that. But there won't be a lot of those and those are the smaller changes. But then there will be likely to be some other changes of a greater magnitude, which perhaps are boundary changes. We're not fixed on that. That's why we're consulting. So please do engage but all of those options that we looked at earlier the boundary changes the change of elected to councillor ratios etc creation of wards um, uh, those are all possible outcomes so i'm sure i can see jackie there is indicating to colleagues that they may wish to put questions in the chat box uh, but what I'll do now is that just before we go on to those, and, and I think Jackie's been kind enough to agree that she'll keep across those chat questions. But if we can do what Jackie said at the beginning, which Sarah, if you can now display, please, the composite list of questions that we had. I'll try, but I think I'm having issues with sharing. So I managed to do that presentation, but I might have to put it in the chat, the document, well, and then do it that way. Like so. It looks like you're getting there, Sarah, don't worry. Is it, is it pulling up? Because um, last time it didn't. Can you see that? Uh, it, the document itself has not come up. So maybe if you just do what you did before and give it a try again, there might be mm. an issue with that page. See if you can yeah. get there. If not, I can do a quick summary of what the question was, I hope. I hope. Um, but it would be helpful. What we did, colleagues, is we, we depersonalised these questions because we didn't feel it appropriate to embarrass any one particular town or parish 
if there was anything in there that they might have felt was sensitive. So that's super. Uh, I don't know if it's possible to just blow it up a little bit, Sarah. Um, I can't actually see what you're seeing. Is it really small? Uh, well, it's not tiny. Are, are people relatively happy with that size of font? It looks really big on my screen, but clearly it's not yeah. looking very so, big on your screen. Well, let's go with it. And I'll tell you when to move it up when I move from one question to right. the other. But we can see there, colleagues, that the first question is quite a detailed question. Um, this related to a particular parish council. And I've answered this one directly in writing because I didn't feel that all of the minutiae would be of great interest to all the rest. But I did want to come back on a couple of things which I think are important and might be concerns uh, to parish councils. First of all, there's, um, you know, the, the terminology used there, the proposed cuts in councillor representation. So what we've obviously got here is a situation where the council's consultation proposals are uh, to reduce the number of councillors that there are in a particular uh, parish. And I understand why, <coughs> excuse me, uh, why that concern is expressed. Uh, the point was made that this particular parish, is, uh, parish has uh, committed volunteer parish councils, councillors, uh, that they were doing a great job, etc. And absolutely get that. I said at the beginning, what a fantastic bunch of town parish councils we've got uh, in Cheshire East Borough the valuable work that they do for the community and that is really acknowledged and what we would not wish to be felt as a consequence of this review is that the the value and the role that they perform is in any way being uh, downgraded but just to give you a, a little bit of an example really um the guidance itself uh, does not set out a uniform number of parish councillors per elector. It couldn't do that. I've already given an example of a rural parish where there is one councillor for every seven electors and yet a town councillor has got one parish councillor for every three and a half thousand. So you will never have a uniform number and the reality is every particular issue and proposal has to be taken on its merits. Um, we, we have to look at a range of things. What is, what is the geography? Uh, what, what is the rural nature? What is the uh, dispersal of electors across a big area? Uh, and all of these things plus more have to be taken into account. Uh, we will also consider, well, what, what have the levels of vacancies been? So I told you at the beginning that over 10% of parish council seats remained vacant at one point. So um, is there an ongoing issue where a parish council just can't get candidates to stand? Um, so we look at all of these things, we accept that there will be variations, there will never be one size that fits all. The query that is in front of you, I won't identify the parish, but it came from a parish council that has got 13 one three seats. 13 parish councillors and it has 580 electors. So if my maths is correct, that's one parish councillor for every 45 electors. And I think that that was one of the reasons why it was felt that taking that into account, plus a range of other things, that we would at least consult on a proposal to reduce down the number. But we're open to views. We, we, we want... Uh, uh, the, the clerk and the chair of that parish council to come back and argue the case to put to us the reason why they should stay at 13, uh, because we, we will look at that. So the next question we've got was question two, if you scroll down a little bit there, let's just see if we've covered it. Um, uh, how will Cheshire East proposals add value um, uh, to the status quo? We actually want our town and parish councils to give the same tremendous value that they do now, actually. So the purpose of this review is not in any way to downgrade that. We want the best answer. Question three, what happens after the consultation period? Could you please give us an approximate time scale? Well, I think uh, in the slide deck that we've had colleagues up to now, you've seen what the timeline is for this community governance review. Uh, this slide deck is available to everyone, we'll circulate it around. So I think that that one should have been answered. Uh, question four says, when a decision is announced after the consultation period, will there be an option of an appeal? 
Well, there is no formal appeal process. Um, you know, I, I guess we would also always have to be mindful if a decision were to be challenged in the courts, wouldn't we? Uh, but I wouldn't expect that to happen because we're doing everything in accordance with the guidance. We're giving everybody an option to engage with this process, but there is no formal appeal process. The legislation places the power in the hands of the Borough Council to undertake this review and to go ahead and deliver it. Uh, question five, uh, will there be an option of a referendum if a parish or town council think that the review has made the wrong decision and think that they have the support of local residents? Well, there is no provision for a, a referendum uh, in these circumstances. As I've said, the process is very clearly set out. The powers are set out in legislation. But what I would say to parish council colleagues is you can see from uh, the proposals that will be put out uh, to consultation, those draft proposals, what it is that the council wants to hear your views upon. So please engage that way. Give us all of the information that you wish to give us in response to those proposals that are going out. And if you feel that this strong local view, there may be all manner of means by which you would want to state that. Uh, you, you may want individuals to sign up to some form of, um, you know, petition type thing to show the strength of feeling. You may want the parish council itself to formally resolve that they support this consultation response. And that way, when our members look at the responses, they might look at some that say, I, I, I Brian Reid, don't want to see a change in this parish. And then they might look at others, and that's val valid, by the way, but then they might look at others that are really well reasoned, well supported within the community and say, right, we need to look at this really carefully uh, because this is this has been thought through. It's supported well locally. Question six, then uh, my main concern from a parish council's perspective is regarding the difficulty in getting the correct format in which to respond. And then the lack of response regarding our feedback to the council. We often feel it has gone into a black hole and that we have wasted many hours of our time. Well, I'm sorry if any parish council, parish councillor or clerk feels that. Because I, early on in this uh, presentation, I said to you that the council is genuinely open and wishing to hear your views. That's why we embarked upon a process of 12 weeks that we have no obligation to embark upon the pre-consultation survey. This is why we're doing the sessions now. This is why we'll be having a formal launch to just encourage as many people as possible to engage. And that's because we want to hear the views. We want to look at them properly. There is no black hole as part of this process. Um, we've spent many, many hours with members already looking at responses being brought back. And you have the commitment that the same again, at least, will be spent in looking at the formal consultation responses. So please do engage. I'm sorry if people feel that way, but there's certainly no um, uh, black hole. There is certainly no waste of energy and time that uh, our parish council colleagues out there are putting into the process. Uh, and then point seven tells us parish councillors are all volunteers and an essential link to the community. However, we're disheartened to feel that our views are discouraged through clunkiness of the process. We want to make this consultation as easy for you to engage with as possible. That's why we're uh, equally open to receiving paper based responses. If that's what you wish, we're going to have papers in local libraries, etc. So uh, individuals who don't have access to the Internet and such like will be able to engage if they wish. There will be um, an online survey to be filled in and completed. If you wish to use that means, you can create your own documents and work them up within the parish council, send them in by email, submit them by post if you wish. So uh, I'm sorry if any colleague feels that there is clunkiness around the process. I genuinely don't believe that there is. I think we're being open in, in giving as much opportunity as possible to engage with this. And I probably end with the questions that were submitted in advance with that encouragement. Please do that. So 
I think Jackie will have been monitoring and I'll hand over to Jackie uh, now really to just manage the next bit of the process for open questions or questions that might have come through uh, on the screen there. Thank you, Brian. And, and first of all, thank you for, for that comprehensive um, overview of the, um, the consultation itself. And I think um, I hope that people take away with them that reassurance um, that it isn't a waste of time. Um, putting in a, a detailed um, response with your with your actual thoughts on why you're putting forward what you're putting forward. I think often we do miss that out. We just assume that you can read minds. OK, I've got one question in the chat and then I'll open it up to the floor. Um, Robert uh, Hughes asks a very practical question. When there are two parish councils that are to be merged, how? Oh, Jackie, you just froze at the crucial moment. You got as far as when there are two parish councils to be merged and it's not. How, how will we deal with the issue of two clerks and two chairmen at that point? Yeah, um, <clears throat> well, we expect there to be, um, as I've said before, few what I might call major changes. But there may there may be circumstances in which uh, there are questions around how we deal with two clerks or two chairs, etc. Um, I think we have to deal with this practically. The first step is for to, us to understand what the changes are, and there will be uh, uh, that opportunity, which I've already given an example of, of Cheshire East Full Council making the final order. There will then have to be a whole lot of practical work which deals with the consequences of that. The two main areas of consequence for Cheshire East are the electoral uh, register and the council tax database, but there will be all sorts of issues. There will be property and assets issues. So if, for example, um, you know, part of one parish goes into uh, a town or another parish or whatever, well, what happens to a building which belongs to the parish council in whose area that building used to be but now falls part of it. So there are all sorts of practical issues like that uh, and we would hope that there will be no significant fallout in terms of the roles of clerks. Uh, I'm certain that uh, the, the work of those clerks uh, where there might be a small number of changes to the roles of clerks, that work still needs to be done and uh, we would have to look at each individual circumstance stance to see whether or not uh, some sort of dual role could be performed, whether one clerk could work with another. Uh, but I don't want to try and answer all of the questions now. What I am aware of is that there are all sorts of practicalities that will need to be resolved through the order that the council makes to deal with any HR related matters, any monetary assets issues, because again, you know, we, you have an issue about, well, if what, what happens to the monetary assets of one parish that, that might end up being split in some way. We, we hope that those situations will be minor in terms of number, but there are all sorts of issues, property, which we will cross at a later stage. But it's a good question because it is one that is relevant as part of the process. Yeah, I, I suspect actually that there'll, there'll need to be a fair amount of, of reassurance and handholding. Um, particularly for employees leading up to um, the change um, yep. and you know I think I absolutely agree with what you say Brian that it can only be done on a case-by-case -case basis exactly um, you just issue general advice for it okay thank you um right um over to you from the floor if you have any questions either by you know physical hand or by putting up a, a virtual hand if you have any questions Lillian Lillian, you're on mute. Is that it? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Lillian Burns, I'm a member of the executive of the Cheshire Association of Local Councils. I have three questions. Uh, why was no representative from the Chalk Board invited to serve on the Constitution subcommittee? Question number one. Question number two, uh, I was going to ask you about any appeals process. Now, you have already answered that question to an extent, but what you basically said is there's no legal requirement for an appeals process. That doesn't mean you couldn't introduce one if you wish to, 
uh, I noticed the closeness of the time scales between uh, the meeting of the um, subcommittee is in March 2022, followed by uh, the matter going to full council in May 2022. You could set that back slightly. You could have the full, it could go to the following full council meeting, or there could be a separate one. But you could actually, if you wish to, if the will was there, have a, a process for appeals. <clears throat> and the third question uh, on slide two, you said some parish councils are not functioning. Uh, I wondered by whose judgment that was, how many, and if you were prepared to share any information with the child executive, and is there anything we can do to help in those circumstances? Um, uh, thank you. And and thank you, Councillor Burns, uh, for, for your question. Start with the last one, which is non-functioning. I did um, uh, preface my uh, mention earlier on about the non-functioning parish councils, that it was a very small number. Uh, these were matters that had been uh, brought to our attention by um, uh, individuals out there in the borough. Uh, and, you know, that those, uh, I always very much value actually the advice and help that we get from Jackie Weaver and Chalk. We do our best to work closely. Um, and indeed, there have been various discussions o over the years on these things. But nevertheless, whatever the history is, um, we're in a position now where we're undertaking a community governance review and therefore it's timely and appropriate that those matters that have been raised with us are taken into account. So that's the first one. Right. Uh, Can I just add to yeah, that to, to reassure um, Lillian that it, it's not you're not talking about councils that, that are not performing well um, in the yeah. case of the two that I know about. Um, because, of course, we're also contacted about them annually because of the um, external audit. Um, they, they just haven't been able to attract a clerk or councillors. They actually don't exist um, and haven't existed for, in the case of, um, I think I can mention it because it's not even an entity, Lyme Handley. Um, I mean, we, we, we kick-started Lyme Handley twice back in the county council days, um, and it still um, ran out of steam when we, when we stepped back. Um, so that nobody was, you know, councillors resigned in due course and nobody came forward from the community to um, to pick it up. And there is one other that I, I won't mention because it's a more, more recent one. So it's councils that, that literally are not functioning at all, not that they're poor performers. And thank you, Jackie. That's important context there. Um, I think it was the first question from Councillor Burns. Uh, why is no rep of Chalk uh, on the subcommittee? Well, as I said before, we very much value our uh, relationship with Chalk that we believe we can sustain and pursue and continue to gain benefit from uh, in uh, ways like we are uh, uh, doing today in the day to day contact that I might have with Chalk's chief officer, etc. Of course, uh, Cheshire East Council subcommittee is a committee of Cheshire East councillors um, and therefore uh, whilst Cheshire East officers may have access to those meetings to advise. Uh, that isn't something which we had proposed uh, to take place in, in the past, but please be reassured I will continue to take advice and um, uh, very much value that advice already given by your chief officer. On appeals and appeals process, uh, well, of course, you, you've got a full period of 12 weeks to respond to the consultation. You can already see the draft consultation proposals that have been worked through. You have a great body of information just to make every uh, 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 every comment or consultation response on the proposals as they are. And in doing that, in setting this up, we're following and actually going beyond the legislation and the guidance. And there's nowhere in the legislation or guidance that suggests that there should be an appeals process. So that's why Councillor Burns, that, that particular issue isn't um, in you know the uh, the timeline of events so far. What we must make sure is uh, you know we've already had a number of unexpected issues that have delayed this project. 
I did expect to be asked, why is it taking so long? We have had a number of issues that have delayed the project. The biggest one is, has been the national emergency with regard to the pandemic. So that has really held things up. Um, uh, and as I said before, has created great practical difficulties for uh, our members in doing the work that they needed to do. We need to be ready for the future. We don't know what uh, other issue might arise that could potentially impede the project. So we can't run things up to the wire in terms of the work that needs to be done. Some weeks and months need to be uh, available once the council order has been made for those database changes to be made to any council tax uh, records or the electoral register. That is a major piece of work. So we can't afford to prejudice that because that unequivocally has to uh, be ready and in place in time for the publication of the electoral register in December 22 and the uh, the uh, council tax round in, in April 2023. So do we have any more questions, Jackie, or does any other colleague? Yes, want to come in? Um, I think I saw Penny Shepherd with a hand up. You're on mute, yes, Penny. I'm yep. doing it. <laughs> Hello there. Hi there. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much for your uh, talk there, um, Mr. Reid. I just, oh, sorry, I better introduce myself. Penny Shepherd, Gorsworth Parish Council, representing Gorsworth Parish Council. I'm a councillor on that. Um, I just have a few, I have quite a few questions actually, but I think I'll, I'll limit it. Um, first of all, you made a statement that you, that, that in the majority of cases, there's going to be no changes. Now, according to the uh, document that was produced at the um, the draft proposals in February, in there there's a table which talks about how many various things there's going to be, whether there's no changes, mergers, etc. You say there, there's only 18 parishes that have got no change. Why are you, th those two statements seem to be in conflict. Secondly, it's about timescales. Right at the beginning of this process, there was some of the early documentation. There was a timeline produced, which basically said that the situation that we are in now was going to be happening 12 months ago. So your timescale is compressed by 12 months. How confident are you that you can actually get work that was going to be done in two years done in one year? And finally, this is coming more specifically to, to, to our situation. When the pre-consultation exercise took place, we went out to some members of our community, not the whole parish, but certain members of our community who we thought may be affected by any proposals that you would come up with to ask them what their views were. And we presented those in the pre-consultation process. When we went to those uh, residents to ask, they also, amongst themselves, organised, some of them organised a petition. In both cases, the result was, we want no change. The, pol the uh, proposals come out and you're going to change everything. So what confidence do we have that any work that we do in this three month consultation is actually going to be taken note of by Cheshire East? when our pre-consultation exercise wasn't. That's just the three. I mean, I haven't got others, but I'll leave it at that because obviously other people may have questions. And, and thank you to Councillor Shepherd for those. I'll, I'll start with the last one about confidence that um, the council will take note of responses submitted as part of the consultation. Well, um, I can reassure you that they will be taken note of. Uh, and firstly, I'm grateful that those local residents and the parish council engaged and took the trouble to do all of that. You, you will remember, uh, colleagues, that uh, as part of the presentation, I listed the range of considerations that had to be made by any borough council undertaking a community governance review. And whilst the views of residents are of great importance, they are not the only consideration. So it may well be that a lot of work was carried out locally and that uh, Councillor Shepherd's uh, view of that in summary was that it was for no change. Um, that's an important thing for Cheshire East Council to take into account, but it's not the only thing. So what I would say is there is further opportunity now. Uh, refresh those representations 
that were made before, resubmit them, work on them further, look at the recommendations that resulted in that proposal by council for no change. Look at that and if there are any issues within those conclusions that the council reached when it when it determined that there should be no change, address those because we have to, as a matter of law, take into account the consultation responses. What we had at that stage was a pre-consultation survey, something that we didn't have to do. It helped us gather thoughts. Uh, those views were taken into account, but now there's further opportunity. And in terms of the timeline, I think we all understand the challenges that have applied to the whole nation, actually the whole world in terms of COVID. So there has been quite a lot of delay associated with COVID alone, which has impacted a range of things. So one example, if you want one example, is that this is a major project. It's one of the biggest projects that Cheshire East Council has had in recent years. We had had a project manager. That project manager was taken away from these duties to deal with emergency COVID matters in terms of testing, etc. That had to happen for the council to protect public safety. So we lost some resource there that we couldn't replace. Um, actually, for those who know a little more, uh, at a recent meeting, I say a recent meeting, back in April, there was a meeting of the council's constitution committee, uh, which called for a referendum to be held before we went out to consultation. Um, this council's monitoring officer had to report to full council in order to get that decision reversed because it was questionable in law um, and the impact of it uh, um, really needed to be understood. It, it was a decision that council decided to turn around. We actually lost as a consequence five months as a result of that and one other issue relating to PERDA restrictions relating to a borough council by-election that's happening on the 2nd of September. So all of these things add up. Uh, in terms of confidence, uh, yes, Councillor Shepherd is probably right. So I rely upon her good calculation that, you know, we have two years and now we've got a year left sort of thing. Uh, how confident can we be? Well, sensibly, we built into the project timeline some, some slack. Uh, and it was a good job we did, because had we not done that, we'd be in trouble. Where we are now is we have a period of time, I think I quoted 20 months at the beginning of this presentation, we have a period of time to get the rest of this done. And there is not a lot of slack in it. So before we talked to Councillor um, Burns, didn't we, about, you know, is there opportunity for some sort of appeal uh, process? We can't afford to build in extra steps that are not required nor advised by government because we we can't afford to end up not having sufficient time to implement and make the changes come out of this. So um, I'm just trying to think whether there is anything else that was raised by Councillor Shepherd there. I think I've covered them. Go, go ahead, Councillor Shepherd, if I've missed something. You're on mute there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the the other question was about where you said that there's the majority of cases you didn't expect there to be any change, oh, yeah. but in the document that was produced from the um, subcommittee, yes, and I know there was one that came later on, but I don't think there was very many great changes and certainly wouldn't have been in this aspect. Yes, It only said in there that 18 parishes are unchanged. Yes. So I'm just wondering how those two statements match up. Okay, well, uh, I suppose we're away on from where we were then. Not none of us know what will actually come out of the consultation. I've got to keep an open mind. My perception is that there will be uh, fewer changes than some might expect. It might have been at the time that, uh, you know, a certain figure was put out, um, but we're open in all of this. Uh, uh, we want to hear people's views. Please respond to the consultation um, and we'll see what comes out of it. Just. I think the emphasis should be on people having their say. Um, I, I'm in the hands of Jackie here uh, in terms of follow on questions, etc. I think, think there may be others. I, I think questions. we're going to move on from that one. I did see a quick flash of a hand from Janet Hughes, but it's gone again. Did you want to ask a question, Janet? 
Yes, I did. Thank you, Jackie. I just thought he was about to answer it. That's why I put my ah. hand. So uh, I'm the chair of North Road Parish Council and there is a proposal. I know you don't want to talk about individuals, but I just it was a follow on from that question. Um, are, are there are there proposals we're going to see uh, around the 6th of September? Are they different from the draft proposals? Are they changed or is it just a repeat of the same? No, so uh, just to be clear on this, um, all individuals in the borough will have a chance to see exactly what it is that the council is consulting upon. If you look at the report that went to full council back uh, in June of this year, that's when full council endorsed the draft proposals upon which we will now consult. So there hasn't been a change in that position uh, compared with what will be consulted upon the, those are still open draft proposals. Those have not changed. That's what we're consulting upon. My recollection is that earlier on in the process, when we were at the subcommittee stage and the constitution committee stage, there were some proposals which in the vast majority have remained the same, but there were one or two little changes. Holmes Chapel, I think was one of them where uh, there was a proposal that was tweaked a little bit, but largely speaking, uh, they remained the same until June, and now that's where we are. June Council, those are the proposals which will be consulted upon draft proposals, and those are the, the draft proposals upon which we want to hear uh, your views and the views of others. But you'll have, you can already see these documents if you look at the June Council meeting agenda. There were 300 pages of proposals. That was the level of detail we went into. So please do look at those and you'll find that when the consultation starts, it's exactly the same position as then. Thank you, Brian. Brian, I think you might want to take this one away from you, uh, for you, with you. Um, does this say that they've, um, they have tried to engage previously with the consultation and they feel their views have been ignored? Um, they don't seem to have re uh, received a reply to their latest email. Are they wasting their time trying to get involved? I'm sorry if any parish council feels that way. Uh, it's not a view that I've heard uh, expressed on a widespread basis. Uh, I'll try and pick that up with, was it Disley, Jackie, you said? Yes, uh, Sue uh, Adams. Sue Adams. Uh, I'll try and pick that up with, with Sue because I'm not clear who the email might have gone to um, or why. So I'll, I'll take that up, thank you. But I don't want anyone to feel that there's that black hole thing because it isn't there. OK, um, Hath Barlow. Hi, um, you mentioned the uh, the documents for the meeting on the uh, in June, but I've had a look and the only thing I can see is a 20 page report, certainly not a 300 page document. On the, on the website. Yes. Yeah. My recollection, forgive me if I'm wrong, uh, is that there is a link somewhere in that documentation to the relevant report pack. But uh, with Sarah's help, what we will do is we will get that link, that crucial link around, which you, you will see these proposals in any event as a consequence of the uh, of the consultation that will start in, what, what is it, just over a, a week away or 10 days or whatever it is. Um, but with Sarah's help, I'll I'll get that circulated around. Uh, it, we... Yeah, it's just you mentioned that councils ought to be looking at what uh, the recommendations were and why things weren't accepted or not accepted. So yes. that link's really crucial, so we can see yeah. exactly why things, you know, weren't changed. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. So we'll we'll get that around. I'm sure Sarah will chat to me after about all of the actions from this meeting. So thank you. OK, I'm not seeing any other hands up at the moment. No, we just about run out of questions then. A, a very brief one, Penny. <laughs> yeah, I do appreciate I don't want to, to, to monopolise. <clears throat> um, I suppose the question I've got is why are you so I would say desperate to actually get it done by the 2023 elections. Why can't you just say we've had 
what we've had. We're going to delay it. We'll put it down for the next elections after that. What's the urgency for getting it done for the 2023 elections? Bearing in mind my, your response to my question about how you're going to get all that, ex, that stuff in the compressed time scale. Uh, you said yourself that there's not a lot of uh, slack in that new programme. Why don't you just say, tell you what, we'll do it slowly. We'll make sure we can get everything right, but we won't do it for the 2023 election. We'll do it for the one after. Well, Thank you. Th Thank you, Councillor Shepherd, for that. And, and of course, we will do it right and we must do it right. Uh, and by doing it for 2023, uh, we have to do it right. There will be no corners cut. Of course, we don't know what the future holds, do we? Uh, but, you know, it's our legislative duty to conduct community governance reviews. The guidance tells us we should be doing it every 10 to 15 years. We're in that time line now based upon what we know what we don't know is when community governance reviews were previously done by the demised authorities in some cases i guess it may be decades before that so this is really uh, out of date there are real issues on the ground out there small number but certain uh, councils that are not functioning properly as jackie has explained to us there are issues where communities are divided by uh, human boundaries that have been put in place like uh, bypasses and things like that. We had the example of um, uh, new build estates in small parishes that are on the outskirts of towns where the residents of those estates are enjoying the facilities paid for by the town council precept payers. So those things have to be considered. It might be that no changes take place as a consequence of some of those things but they have to be considered and I don't think it is uh, uh, any good uh, approach of a local authority just to kind of kick the can down the road a little bit and ignore the fact that there is that statutory duty that exists for the council to do this but I know that there is a strength of feeling out there and I respect that so please engage in the process tell us that something either should or shouldn't happen and that will be taken into account. Okay, thank you, Brian. Okay, um, I, I think that um, we've, we've all had a good opportunity um, to, to ask questions of you, Brian. Thank you for that. Um, and I think if I take anything away um, from this afternoon, um, it is that um, you've recognised that the links aren't quite as clear as they might be. I must admit it's a pet hate of mine when you have to go into one document to find another, another document. Um, uh, trying to find a code of conduct or something similar. Um, so thank you for taking that on board. Um, and I think it's about all of us just doing the, the best we can to encourage people to, to get on board with this. Because although we may have reservations about it, the train has left the station, it is going to happen. And if we don't engage with it, then, you know, we, we miss an opportunity. Um, so I'm sure that you um, make yourself available by email and other forms of communication, Brian, if people have specific questions about their particular parish, um, because we've been very mindful this afternoon that we haven't focused on, on individual parishes. But I'm sure that if you have something you want to discuss, perhaps in terms of how you present um, your evidence, then I'm sure that Brian and the team would be happy to pick that up going forward. So thank you all for um, your, your time, your patience, your contribution this afternoon, and um, let's go get the bank holiday started. <laughs>